Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about angle arc relationships. The first angle arc relationship we're going to talk about is a central angle. So when we have an angle that goes to the center of the circle and then out, it's kind of like, I always think of it like a piece of the pie. We would have its degree measure, which I've highlighted here with the little arc. And then we actually have the arc measure out here. Now arc measure is also measured in degrees and it's based off the fact that all circles are 360 degrees. So when we say from here to here is the arc measure, we're saying out of that 360 degrees, what would this portion be? What would that arc measure be? And what's really cool is it's the exact same as the angle measure, right? So the angle measure is equal to the arc measure. So let's say this degree was 85 degrees. Well then the arc measure from here to here would also be 85 degrees. The next angle arc relationship we're going to talk about is an inscribed angle. So notice this one cuts all the way across the circle, our angle measure does, but it still stays within the circle. So for this one, we can find our arc measure from here to here if we just multiply the angle measure by two, right? And we see that right here, arc equals two times the angle. Or if you were given the angle and asked to find the arc measure, the angle equals one half times the arc measure. The next one is exterior angle. So this one's similar to the inscribed angle, but notice that it extends outside of the circle. So our angle measure that we're looking for is outside of the circle. Now for this one, we can find the angle measure if we multiply one half times the far arc minus the close arc. So for this one, what we're saying is if we took the far arc measure, so that would be if our exterior angle is over here, this arc measure from here to here, that would be our far arc. And then our close arc measure would be the one closest to the angle. So from here to here, we take our far arc measure and subtract our close arc measure, and then multiply that by one half, and that will tell you your exterior angle. The next one we'll look at is two chords. Notice I have two chords here, and I can find this angle measure if I multiply one half times the arc measure of AB plus the arc measure of CD. Next we'll look at a chord and tangent. So notice here we have a chord stretching across the circle, but not through the center. And then we have a tangent, which just touches the circle and then it keeps going. It doesn't actually cross through the circle. So we can find the arc measure from right here to right here if we take the angle measure and multiply it by two. Or we could find the angle measure by taking the arc measure and multiplying it by one half either one. The last one on this page we're going to talk about is inscribed quadrilaterals. So notice that we have a quadrilateral that is within a circle, but that doesn't change our basic principle about a quadrilateral. So if we had each corner measured, the measure of angle A, B, C, and D would all add up to 360 degrees. And that comes from the basic principle that the angles within a quadrilateral will always add up to 360 degrees. And an extension of that is that our opposite angles, so here A and C or B and D, would add up to give you 180 degrees. Let's look at a few more angle arc relationships. 
First, we have a tangent and secant. So a secant is a line that cuts through the circle. A tangent just touches the circle and then keeps going. And they cross outside of the circle and form this angle measure. Same thing with two tangents. We have two tangents that just touch the circle and then keep on going. And where they cross, they also form an angle outside the circle with two secants as well. So these are two lines cutting through the circle. They cross out here and form an angle. So for each of these situations, you can use the same formula. We can find that outside angle if we say 1 half times the far arc measure minus the close arc measure. So in each picture, this would be our far arc measure from here to here in degrees. And this would be our close arc measure from here to here in degrees. For this one, this would be our far arc measure. This would be the close arc measure. And for our two secants, this would be the far arc measure. And this would be the close arc measure. The next type of relationship we're going to look at actually has two types. We have tangent and radius. And there's type 1 and type 2. So first for type 1, Notice we have a tangent here and a radius here. A radius always starts at the center of the circle and moves to the outer edge of the circle. Together they form a 90 degree angle. And so if we were to create an extension here, which I've shown just with a dashed line, then what's important to notice is now we've created, in this case, a right triangle. And when we have a triangle, all of our angles, so in this case our A, our 90 degree, our angle B, and then our angle C, would all add up to be 180 degrees. For our second type of tangent and radius, notice here that I have two tangents, and I have a radius here, and I have a radius here. And notice that this radius and tangent form a 90 degree angle and this radius and tangent form a 90 degree angle, just like we talked about over here. But now we've created a quadrilateral. So it's important to remember that the angles inside a quadrilateral are always going to add up to 360 degrees. The last type of relationship we're going to look at is a chord and a diameter. So notice we have a chord cutting through the circle but not through the center of the circle, right? But then we have a diameter that does cut through the center of the circle. So in this case, it's important to recognize that these have a perpendicular relationship to each other. That means that they form a 90 degree angle. So we can also say that the arc measure from here to here would be congruent from here to here, right? And we show that with these little tick marks. And we could also say that the arc measure from here to here is congruent to the arc measure from here to here. And again, we show that there with the double tick marks. Let's look at a few examples together where we can actually put these angle arc relationships in action so that we can solve for some angles. In this first one, notice I haven't told you what the relationship is. So we have to be able to look at a relationship occurring at a situation and decide, okay, what relationship is it and what is the formula that goes along with that relationship? For this first one, notice it's a cut straight across the circle. It's not to the center of the circle. It's all the way across, right? But it doesn't occur outside the circle either. It's just on the edge. So this one is an inscribed angle. And let's remember what that formula for an inscribed angle said. It said that the angle equals one half times the arc. So they've told us the arc from here to here is 74 degrees. So let's plug that in. So our angle, which in this case is x, right, equals one half times 74. 1 half of 74 would be 37. So that tells us x is 37 degrees. 
So in this next example, notice it's very similar to the inscribed angle, but this time it actually extends beyond the circle, right? And our angle is actually occurring outside of the circle. So this one is an exterior angle. So let's remember that formula for an exterior angle. It was our angle measure equals one half times far arc minus close arc. We want that angle X, which is one half times the far arc is 68 and the close arc is 45. So one half times 68 minus 45, you could type that in your calculator, but you're gonna end up with X equals 11.5 degrees and it is okay to get a decimal. In this next one, there's a lot of information going on on this one, but notice that we have a chord. So it's a segment that crosses a circle, but it doesn't cross through the center. So that would be a chord. And then this is a line that just touches the circle and then it keeps going. So that's a tangent. This is a chord and tangent. And our formula for when we have a chord and tangent would be our angle equals one half times the arc. So we want to know this angle that is formed by the tangent and the chord, and then it's telling us this arc is 80 degrees. We want to know the angle measure, which is one half times the arc of 80. Now half of 80 is going to be 40. So that tells us this angle measure, so X is 40 degrees. But let's be careful here because they also threw a Y in here. They also want to know what would this arc measure be? So we've got to use kind of some of our knowledge about circles to figure that one out. So remember a circle is 360 degrees. So if we know that from here to here is 80 degrees, how could we figure out from here to here? Well, we know the total is 360 and we know a portion of it from here to here is 80. So then 360 minus 80 is just 280 degrees. So we know Y from here to here is 280 degrees. Okay, in this one, notice that we have a secant. So it's a line that cuts through a circle and then we have a tangent. So this one is a line that just touches the circle and then it keeps going. So this is a secant and tangent. So our relationship for a secant and tangent tell us that we can find the angle measure this far exterior angle by saying one half times the far arc minus the close arc, right? So the angle we're looking for is X equals one half times the far arc is 110 and the close arc is 50. So you can even just type that straight into your calculator, one half times 110 minus 50, and you get X equals 30 degrees. Now for this last example together, notice that we have um, a line, it's a segment that cuts through the circle but not through the center right here. So that's a chord. And then we have a segment straight across the circle but that does cut through the center of the circle. So that's a diameter. This is a chord and diameter. And our relationship, remember, for a chord and diameter is that it creates these arc measures that are congruent. So those two arc measures are congruent, just like these two arc measures would be congruent to each other as well. So what we can say here with this given information is that from here to here, 7x, is equal to, from here to here, 48 minus X. And now we can just solve for X. So we would wanna add X to both sides. 7X plus X is 6X equals 48. And then we'd wanna divide both sides by six to get X alone, and we get X equals six. So I just realized the solving error, 
I hope that you guys caught it too. 7x plus 1x should be an 8x. Doesn't change anything other than when we divide, we're not going to be dividing by 6, my bad, we're dividing by 8. So let's do 48 divided by 8. Sorry, I hope I didn't confuse anybody there and hopefully y'all caught that mistake as I was doing it. So 48 divided by 8 is 6. So that tells us x equals 6. Okay, here's two for you guys to try. You need to figure out what is the relationship occurring and then what's the formula that goes along with that relationship to figure out your x or your missing information. I will post the answer for x in the video description below. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.